The Ambassador Program is just a great program that I get excited about because we have families that really want to tell their story and they want to tell people and families what TARC has done for them. And it's just a proud moment for parents or guardians or the whole entire family to see their individual shining and being a part of something that is so great. She had a blood clot on the brain and she had hydrocephalus. Um, she is mentally maybe a two-year-old. She is ambulatory. She's able to move around and get around. She can make sense of things that she's told. She can perform small repetitive operations as far as being able to live independently. That's never going to happen. It was a normal pregnancy until an ultrasound at about 33 weeks and they were able to discover that there was an abnormality with the size of her head. So further testing, including an amniocentesis, discovered that she had hydrocephalus and they took her with a cesarean at 35 weeks so that the, uh, they were able to do the surgery within the next couple of days to, to place a shunt in her head before damage would be too intense. It was scary. It was scary, and, and it happened so fast. I mean, we didn't find out until the last minute. And, and it just happened so fast that we didn't have a great deal of time to think about it. It's very scary because 34 years ago, you didn't have the technology at your fingertips that you have today as far as internet, um, support groups. They handed me one brochure and said, here you go, this is, this is about hydrocephalus, and that was it. She was like a normal child, but the only difference was Stephanie uh, learned to sit up, but she could not walk, uh, she could not talk, and the only thing she could do was cry in the way she could cry best. And that's when we noticed that the surgery that she had for the tumor had left her with some disability. And most of the people around me did not know anything about it. All they did was refer to it as a waterhead baby. And they were saying, well, which institution will you put her in and this and that. And, and you know, you, you kind of have to educate yourself. Um, we had an awesome neurosurgeon who got her involved in all of the therapy programs at Children's Hospital in New Orleans. And even at just a couple of months old, we were taking her twice a week for physical and occupational therapy, which I feel really benefited her and her development. Because when you have surgery that extreme at that young of an age, you're bound to have developmental disabilities, delays, and they were very firm about wanting to start intervention as soon as possible and I do believe it helped her in the long run because she although she did not walk until she was about six years old she, she they, they kept muscles going they kept the strength in her muscles and her arms and her legs kept them exercised kept them supple so that she would be able to eventually learn how to do things just at a much slower pace than a normal child here we've worked on some of the things that her mother was very excited about. We're working with her recognizing letters um, and different things that her mom said she has never accomplished. Stephanie has um, been to different many programs and things that she's done just in the last four to six months that she's been with us. Her family's been very pleased at the progress she's made here at the TARC Day Habilitation Program. Stephanie has started to come out now since she's been to TARC. Um, the last place she was, she didn't like very much. They didn't do a lot with her. But since she's been going to TARC, she's become a little more outgoing, a little more conversant. She's eager to go on a regular basis. She enjoys going. Um, she's taught them a few things. We, we send some of her favorite books with her, and she'll read to all of the clients, and they thoroughly enjoy it. And she enjoys the attention that she gets in return from them and they've helped her work on a few little life skills like um, coloring, write, learning her name. She, she can spell her name, she's just never been able to write it or recognize it on paper. And they've been working with her on that. And she can act, she's actually learned a few letters and, and things like this that we never thought would ever be possible. 
You're always going to have handicapped citizens out here. I mean, they're, they're, it, just, it just happens. Not everybody is privileged enough to, to have the means to, to, say, pay for their own therapists, whatever they would need to help with the children. And, and in a case like TARC, they offer a service that is so very important because we, this is my respite when she goes, I'm her full-time caretaker. When she goes to TARC, that's my respite time that I can get things done. Other than that, she's at home with me and I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I enjoy being her mom, it's, it's a blessing. But to have, it's, it's also good to have her exposed to other peers in an environment that she's comfortable in. She doesn't do well in, in large areas if there are babies crying, a lot of noise, traffic, things like that. It, it upsets her and it, it, it's not a good thing. Over there, it's a, it's a calming environment. She's comfortable with the people she's with. She has actually made a friend there, which is something we never thought would happen because she's always kept to herself. There's a, another girl there named Christy and she and Stephanie have become friends and, and that, that that means a whole lot to me because that is that is a very big, big step for Stephanie to acknowledge a friendship with someone else. Our uh, youngest ambassador, Maddie Milton, represents us with the Very Special Miss Louisiana. This family is very special. If you see this family, when you see Maddie, you see the entire family. They're always together. Anything that Maddie is doing, the whole entire family is involved in. Maddie is... Um, representing us in the Very Special Miss Louisiana as a queen in her division. Uh, we've assisted her family in many different areas by giving them guidance and the, the resources that are out there that the state has to offer. And we're just excited to have that family and to be a part of leading them in the right direction. Around six months old, um, I had a friend of mine come over who had a baby two weeks after I did. And her child was all over the place, you know, getting into stuff. and. Maddie just laid there, played with her mobile. She didn't, and she barely even played with her mobile. And that's when I knew something, she was developmentally delayed or something wasn't right. After that, I started kind of taking things into my own hands. I showed up at a, a place in Baton Rouge that uh, deals with cerebral palsy. And I was like, look, I don't, I don't have an appointment. I don't really know what y'all do here but maybe somebody can lead me in the right direction. And they had a social worker talk to me and she got me in with early, the early learning steps. So I had a therapist come to the house and the therapist uh, ordered for Maddie to have a swallow study done. We got in touch with a neurologist and they ordered an MRI. Well, she went for the swallow study and they immediately admitted her in the hospital because she was aspirating. She was 13 months. So they, they put a G-tube uh, in, and that's how, she, that's how she's been fed ever since she was 13 months. Before that, it was bottle feedings. You know, we were trying to start at a spoon feed. It was normal. And then um, while we were in that hospital, I got them to go ahead and do the MRI. And the doctor came in and said, um, I think what she has is schizencephaly. And from then, we immediately started looking things up. We later went to the neurologist and they said it the same thing, you know, it looked like schizencephaly. So, and they basically told us to prepare for her never to walk or talk. So for a year after, it was like depression and, um, you know, like, think, like, how do you, you can't prepare yourself for anything like that. Um, to know that your daughter may never talk, you know? It's kind of hard. <laughs> you never, you think about it, you, she may never hear her call you, you know, mama or, you know? So um, it was a little, it was hard. It was really hard. And I, it, it, took, it took about a year to finally just embrace it and, you know, just love her for who she is. <laughs> You know, I mean, of course I've always loved her, but it really was just like, you know, just roll with the punches, I guess. <laughs> Even though she doesn't talk, she has her own way of communicating. She does a little bit of sign language, but she, she points and, you know, she has her own way of communicating, telling you what she wants. You know, the kids go outside and play. She points, she wants to go outside. 
And they'll, they'll push her in her wheelchair around and she has so much fun with that. You know, she wants to do normal kid things and I try to make that happen as much as possible. One thing I do with the kids during holidays is we'll decorate uh, cookies or cupcakes and she gets her own cookie and some icing and I just let her go to town. I let her do what everybody else does. She doesn't eat the supper I cook but I still put her at the table like she's a normal child, you know? We want to welcome you all to Very Special Miss Louisiana, sponsored by TARP, which is a nonprofit organization that serves people with disabilities. Very Special Miss Louisiana pageant. Okay, so uh, our decision to do this was uh, basically, you know, the rest of the kids, they have activities. We put them in ball, we put them in you know, they go to school and they have they have these activities that they do. And Maddie just kind of gets just dragged along to the baseball games. And, and we thought, well, this is something for her. Like, she can do this. And so from there, we started getting everything together. And um, oh my gosh, she had so much fun. After she won Queen for the four and five-year-olds, uh, of course, we were so excited for her, and she was excited. You know, I don't know if she really knew what was going on, but she was she was excited. I I think uh, you know, uh, donating to an organization like this um, is. I mean, what better place would you put your money, or put your donations, or put anything? Um, you're helping kids who really are somewhat helpless. TARC has been around for over 40 to 43 years providing services to individuals and their families. Things have been quite different in the last six, seven years. Uh, we've had a lot of cuts. We've had a lot of things change in our programs. And the way that we're gonna survive is that we ask the public to continue to support us in our different uh, fundraisers. And if you just have the, the heart to wanna to help a great organization, TARC is a great organization to help because we help families that need us. We have individuals that um, just need our guidance and that's what we're here for. TARC is a nonprofit and we are our money is given to us through Medicaid. And Medicaid is a program that the state is looking at every year. And with the Medicaid program, we look at cuts each year. So the future for us is, you know, unforeseen. We don't know what's gonna happen in the future with cuts and maybe possibly programs. So by us having the public continue to give to TARC, we are able to continue those services and programs that we maybe have cuts that may keep us from continuing that program. So it's just very uh, important that people continue to be aware of what we do. Because you never know when you may see an individual or a family that needs our services and say, hey, give TARC a call. TARC can guide you and lead you in that direction.